Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org back with another video for the new Boston. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at incrementing a value in a database by grabbing the value and updating it. And we're going to do this in the, uh, the way of a hit counter, and it's going to be a unique hit counter. We're also going to have another table, despite the one where we're counting a, a single value, we're incrementing a single value. We're going to have a table that's going to store the IP address of the users that are visited. Um, this is a very sort of loose way to do it, but it's just going to give you an idea of updating and, and everything like that. But we're going to keep a track of the users that are visited. So if the user has visited, we're not going to increment the uh, value. So it's basically a unique hit counter, but using what we've already learned uh, with, with uh, SQL and SQL statements or queries rather. So we've already got this food table, but we're going to ignore that for now because that was from the last tutorial. What we want to now do is create a new table, and I'm going to call this um, hit count, hits underscore count. Now this is going to be a single field uh, table. We're going to have one field on it, and this is going to just be an integer starting from zero. And we're going to work our way up as we refresh the page as long as our IP address doesn't exist in another table, which is what we're going to create in a minute. So if we click go, um, the field we're specifying is going to be called count. It's an integer. We're going to set it as the primary key because technically it is a unique value. Um, however, we don't need an auto increment because uh, we're going to be specifying this value anyway. We could put auto increment. That would be a lot easier, but it would avoid the point of teaching you perhaps how this uh, can work another way. So the quick and easy way would be to click auto increment. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the current value and then add one to it and then increment. So uh, it, we're going the long way around things, but it's going to allow you to practice a lot more. OK, so we need to save this. Let's just go down and save that. So we've created this table with uh, this um, count value here. Uh, if we browse the table at the moment, we've got nothing in. So what we're going to do is initially we're going to need to set this value to zero by clicking insert, entering zero and clicking go. You can now see that when we browse, we've got count equal to zero. Now within PHP, we're not going to do anything else in MySQL with regards to this. In PHP, we're going to grab this value, add one and then reinsert it into here or update it rather. So we need another table now, and that's going to be called hits IP. And this is going to be a list of the IP addresses that have accessed the site. So again, we just need one field. Uh, and this is going to be IP. We don't need to set this to a primary key. Um, this is going to be a varchar. Now, if you think about an IP address, let's just go to here. Uh, we've got a possibility of this um, this amount of characters in an IP address. So we've got three here, then six, nine, 12 in length. Add the three dots is uh, 13, 14, and 15. So we need it to be 15 characters or less. Um, and we're not gonna set that to primary. It'll give us a warning that we haven't set it to primary, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so no index defined here, but that's okay. So. IP address is going to be stored in here in a long list and um, our hit counts are going to be stored in here. Now there are other ways to do this. Obviously we, we could just have um, a method to store the IP addresses and then count the amount of IP addresses or unique IP addresses that are present using the MySQL numRows function and that's going to work in exactly the same way. So there's loads of possibilities to create this but like I said I'm just going the long way around things so we learn uh, a bit better. So back to PHP, we're not really going to do much more in uh, my, uh, PHP my admin now. Um, I'm going to first of all include or require this connect file that we've created earlier on in the tutorials. If you haven't already seen that, I suggest you do so if you don't know how to connect to a database. So we've connected to our database and we're requiring this within our page. So um, if it's not there, we're not going to run the page. Simple enough. The next thing we need to do is grab the user IP and I'm going to put this into a variable called user IP. So remember we're using dollar underscore server and then we need a remote address in there with the address shortened. Uh, there's another tutorial on this as well if you haven't already uh, learned how to do this. So we've created a variable called user IP. Let's just echo that out. And uh, this is just to check that we're getting a value back correctly. 
Okay, so don't seem to be getting a value back. Oh, it's because we haven't saved the file, so that would help. Let's refresh. Okay, so I've got my local IP address being returned to me. We can test it just with this. So what's going to happen is I'm going to refresh the page. The hit count is going to go up. My IP address is going to be stored. Then the next time I refresh, we're going to check for my IP. If my IP does exist in the database, or in the table rather, we're not going to update the count. But if it doesn't, again, we are. So it's essentially like um, a file-based hit count like we've already uh, discussed in some of the other tutorials. If you haven't seen that and you want to look at that, then you can go back and view them. Um, but now we're using databases instead. Okay, so we're going to be using two functions within our program. Um, I'm going to predefine these functions out. I'm going to write a skeleton, if you like, of these functions. And then we're going to fill them in at a later date. So the first function is going to be called um, IP exists, and the argument we're going to give this is IP. So we're going to be specifying the IP address into this function. So it's going to look something like um, like this, and obviously this variable here is going to be user IP. So uh, that's our first function. Our next function is going to be, um, let's just say, update count. And this is going to take uh, no arguments because all we're doing is incrementing the value by one. That's simple enough. Now, because we've declared this user IP outside of our um, functions, we need to create a global of these inside. So we're saying global user IP. That's going to allow us to use this IP address outside there. Um, sorry, we don't need to do that in this function, but we do in this function because we need to get the IP and uh, we need to compare it to the user's IP um, that's been specified. So uh, let's just echo out user IP and check that that uh, works within that function. So IP exists and let's just give this a value of 1 uh, and we can refresh. Now you can see that it's still being echoed out. However, if I was to remove this global keyword and just try and echo out user IP, you can see it doesn't work because we need to make this globally usable inside of our function.